how come such a difference from those who can reach such incredible heights and those who haven't yet found the answers for their life and their health and their future? We just have to ponder that and let that give us a note of seriousness. It's serious whether you win or lose. It's serious whether you succeed or fail. It's serious whether you've got a good future carved out for yourself or you do not. Here's how to really cash in on this year. Number one, get serious. Life is serious. We call it life or death. Next, to make this your best year ever, have a piece of the 400 million. See what you can do to touch as many people as you can possibly touch. Here's number two. Get smart. That's what these journals are for. That's what pad and pencils for. That's what taking notes is for. See if you can't increase your ability to comprehend ideas, information that can be life transforming. Don't miss the opportunity to learn. Take a good key phrase home, use it in your training. Don't be lazy in learning. Don't be casual in learning. Develop a whole new intensity for the 90s that you're not going to miss the information. You're not going to miss the stories. You're not going to miss the details. Get smart. There's a couple of parts to it. Number one, your own personal experience. Right? If you've had a bad week, just sit down and ponder that for a while. Study it. See if you can't pick up some ideas from a poor week and then make a better week. Learn from your own experiences. One way to learn to do it right is to do it wrong. And you know that's one way to learn to do it right. Do it wrong. Now the key is don't let it take too long. If you've done it wrong for a year, we suggest that's slum enough. You'll need another year just to prove a point. One year is enough. Learn from your own experience. Right, so the call didn't go well or all that stuff. Guess what they did when they finished that call? They made another call. What else could we do to make it better? How could we possibly improve? This is called the possibility for life change starts with education. Don't be lazy in learning. Don't be lazy in picking up the ideas. Don't be lazy in learning from your own experience. That's why you've heard from some people that have shared their testimonials here and given you some of their ideas. Ways and means of taking this product to the marketplace making it work for you. We've devoted most of our time for that, and well, we should. Learning is the beginning of wealth. Learning is the be of change. So education, get smart. Don't miss the training class you say. Well, I've already been to one of those classes. I've already heard it. I got a good phrase for you to take on. That's no sign you got it. Just because you've listened to those millionaire takes one time, no sign you've got it. I'm asking you to listen to them over and over and over. I'm asking you to dedicate yourself to a new level of learning in 1992. When I travel with Mark Hughes, he's got his book open. He's got a book open. He's reading. He's studying lives of successful people. Lives of despicable people. You know, study, learn, grow, change, develop. Never let it be said you didn't learn, right? If you want to solve your problems, you've got to learn. You want to take advantage of an opportunity, you've got to learn. We can't come here and just give you the marketing plan, give you the product, send you home. We've got to stay for a while, learn. Stay for a while, right? Put on those cassettes and stay for a while. We asked you to come here for a couple of days and stay for a while. Do some learning, take it back home. So number two, to have your best year ever, a good piece of that 400 million make your dreams come true. Number one, get serious. Number two, get smart. Develop your own personal philosophy here. Philosophy, major determining factor in how your life works out. Each person's philosophy is like the set of the sail. The same wind blows on us all. The difference is where we arrive at the end of the week, at the end of the month, at the end of the year. It is not the wind that blows. And the wind is blowing around the world. The world is in solution. Things aren't changing. The walls have come down. All kinds of things that are happening in Russia tonight. The day the winds are blown, but what's going to make the major difference? Each person's personal philosophy that sets a better sail sets a better sail. So don't ask for a more favorable wind. That's like wishing something that's not going to occur. Don't ask for better seed and soil. All you got is what's available. Don't curse what you got on this planet. All we got is the seed that's here, the soil that's here, the miracle of life that's here. The opportunity that's here, seasons that are here, that's all we got. Wherever you've come from in your country, the economy you got, that's all you got. In America, our economy, that's all we got. 
The government, that's all we got. The marketplace, that's all we got. Whatever you do, don't criticize. The key is to set a better sail and turn what you've got into the miracle of your future. Don't wish it was easier. Wish you were better. Don't wish for less problem. Wish for more skills. That's the reason for coming here. Spending a couple of days of intense effort taking notes. Rolling up your sleeves, going to work. Commit yourself to learning so that you can get smarter for the days ahead. Develop your philosophy. Herbalize philosophy has carried it now these 12 years to extraordinary heights. Those who do the work get to pay. A philosophy that commits itself to having the finest no matter what it costs. That kind of pull-up. I'm asking you to develop your own personal philosophy. Get your business philosophy going. Get your financial plan going. Don't violate the conclusions of your own philosophy by not executing and taking action. Get smart. Here's number three. Get going. As smart as you might become after these two days, as many ideas as you take away from here, they're truly, as Larry mentioned, like seeds to be planted in the soil. You gotta get going. You have gotta take action. The discipline is the miracle process. And here's how to get the miracle of your future going. As far as disciplines are concerned, number one, you might go home and set a whole new pace for yourself, and we call it cleaning up neglect. You should walk around the block, but walk around the block for your good health. Don't walk around the block. Do you're on the wrong track. You should read. Could read. Don't read on the wrong track. You should call. You could call. Don't call on the wrong track. You could change. You should change. Don't change. You're on the wrong track. Letters you haven't written. Conversations you haven't had with your family. Somebody you should sit down with when you get back home. Get that job done. Don't let neglect destroy your days, destroy your life, and destroy your future. Go back and do what you can. And if you'll do what you can, then life will give you some extraordinary things to do. We all pity them and write once to straight out of his house. Go straighten up the corporation. Has not yet straightened out his garage. You gotta take care of the small disciplines before life will give you a chance to handle the more complicated disciplines. How do you think Mark Hughes got here scattered now throughout 14, 15 countries? Another 14, 15 coming up? I mean, how do you do this? You start first with the smallest of disciplines and do not neglect them and do not disregard them as being trifling. Everything's important. Good phrase to take on. All disciplines affect each other. In fact, here's a good philosophical phrase if you haven't thought of it before. Everything affects everything else. It's so easy to be casual and say, well, this doesn't matter, this doesn't matter. I'm telling you, everything matters. Of course, some things matter more than others. But there isn't anything that doesn't matter. Every new discipline affects all your other disciplines. If you'll get some new things going, make some calls you've never made before, step up your activity level, step up your labor level, develop the skills from these two days of training here, and you'll go home and work some miracles on your days and your life and your future and your income and your business. And a bigger portion of that 400 million will certainly be yours. Go for the disciplines, the smallest of disciplines, the least of disciplines, like keeping your accounts in order. The smallest of disciplines. Did you ever hear this expression? I don't know where it all goes. Did you ever hear that? I don't know where it all goes. Wow. Oh, we'd love to have you run Herbalife. You don't know where it all goes. How long do you think we'd last here in Herbalife if that was your philosophy, sitting at the top like Mark Hughes? Let me give you the story on Mark Hughes. Mark knows where everything goes, and he started back when he only had pennies. He started back when he only had dollars. He started back when he didn't have much. One of the greatest extraordinary phrases that's ever been written from antiquity says, If you'll be faithful, if you'll be disciplined when the amounts are small, we'll make you a ruler. Give you a position of authority when the amounts are many. So, Mrs. I, I've only got two or three distributors. I don't know where they are. Come on. If you've only got two or three, you can know when to get up. You can know when they go to bed. You can know all the details. Take care of your disciplines when the amounts are small. And then life will see to it that you get some extraordinary numbers to work with. Like you saw the stories displayed here. Do not disregard the smallest of disciplines. Let us not neglect.
Do not neglect the smallest of disciplines and build on that foundation. And you can have everything you could possibly want. Okay, get going. Get better. There isn't any of us that can't get better. So turn on this whole idea of personal development and personal growth. It's what my teacher shared with me to change my life starting a few steps from here. That convincible, I'm telling you, for things to get better, you've got to get better. Don't ask for it to change out there. Ask for you to change here. Don't ask for a more favorable win. We call that naive. Don't ask for better sea, better soil. This is the only planet you've got. Just ask that you can get wiser and stronger and better. Be able to take care of your own responsibilities. Get better. Learn how to handle the seasons better. Let's go through them. Some stuff I did on satellite many, many years ago. Let me just review those notes for you on this getting better part. Learn how to handle the seasons of life. Learn how to handle the winters. We're all going to go through some winters. Herbalife's been through a few. Just the winters of the calendar in the last 12 years. How many winters? But at 12. But it's not just the winters of the calendar. It's not just the winters of the seasons. There's all kinds of winters. The winter when you can't figure it out. The winter when it all goes wrong. The winter when you have all kinds of headaches on the telephone call, right? The winter when you get that first half dozen refunds. The winters of your life. Social winters. Political winters that we're going through around the world. The economic winters that a lot of people are experiencing these days. Personal winters when your heart is smashed in a thousand pieces. And the nights are unusually long. It is simply called winter time. But here's what you've got to do in your own personal development. Your own personal growth. And that is just get better at handling the winters. You can't change the winter. You can't change the seasons. But you can change yourself. You say, what can I do about the upcoming winters of my life? The challenges that I know I'm going to face. Here's what you can do. You can get wiser and stronger and better. Just make a list of that trio of words. Wiser, stronger, better. Go home smarter than you came. Go home with more ideas than you came with. Next, you can develop the muscle. You can develop the courage muscle. You can develop the inspiration muscle. You can develop the dedication muscle. You can get stronger. There isn't anybody here that can't get stronger. Next time we see you, you may not even recognize you. How strong you're going to be able to become in language, style, and personality. The ability to cope. The ability to handle anything that happens. I better, we can all get better. I've gotten better under getting better. I just want to make you make this list of four words. Four words. First, we talked about getting serious. Second, get smart. Third, get going. Fourth, it gets better. And here's four good words to take home. One is absorb. Develop the skill and the ability to absorb everything. Be like a sponge, like you've been today. This has been a good, serious group. I appreciate that you worked as hard as we have up here on this platform. You rolled up your sleeves and you went to work and you've taken notes. And I appreciate that. Absorb everything you can. Absorb the sights and the sounds and the color. Guess what? You're going to want to do. Go back home and invest this experience into other people's lives. And you can't invest it if you haven't got it. So, I'm asking you to appreciate the color. I'm asking you to appreciate the auditorium. I'm asking you to appreciate what's going on here. I'm asking you to appreciate each other. So, it's all up. Soak it all up. It's called absorb, absorb, absorb. Then when you get back home, you can give out, give out. Give out. And you'll have an extraordinary effect on the people that you reach out and touch. Here's the next one. Develop the ability to respond. That's what got me almost six years ago. Mark and Larry made that call. I responded. It the vision they gave me, the story they gave me, the pictures they painted, the numbers they gave me, what we could do together, the team we could build, dominate the industry, walk head and shoulders above anything else that's out there, have an extraordinary adventure that's only been given to a few. Chance to walk the summit got me touched. Now I'm asking you, however, not only to be touched with the summit numbers, the 400 million, I'm asking you to be touched with the smallest of people challenges. Don't just be touched with the challenge. I'm asking you to be touched with the problem. Let people's problems get to you. Let people's problems touch your heart this year like never before. Be touched. Let life touch you. They let it kill you, but let it touch you. 
the problems that are out there. People struggling with their economy, struggling with their health, struggling with their future. I'm asking you to let that get around your heart. Let it do something to you. Don't go untouched. Don't go on unmoved. When you walk out of here, open yourself up. Don't build up the wall, the same wall that keeps out disappointment, keeps out happiness and opportunity. Take the wall down. Let yourself be touched by what's going on out there. Let sad things make you sad as well as happy things make you happy. Let your heart get touched and you'll have good hands then to take this product to the marketplace. Develop the ability to reflect. Long after this session is over, I'm asking you to go back over it one more time. I'm asking you at the end of the day, go back over your day. I'm asking you at the end of the week, go back over your week, make that week more valuable. At the end of the month, go back over your month. At the end of a conversation, go back over the conversation. How did it go and what did you do? Learn by reflecting. I call it run the tapes again of your own experiences. And you say, why do that? Here's why. It's a developed, extraordinary ability to gather up the past and invest it in the future. What a next year you could have if you pay more attention to the year. Soak it up, gather it up, and reflect at certain times what's going on and what's happening. And this year will take a more powerful place in your experience. And then when you get ready to deliver in 1993, people will not believe the words you've chosen. They will not believe in heart and soul that you've mixed with words. They won't believe the power you've got. A few simple things here under getting better. And here's the last one. And that's to share. We've got this extraordinary opportunity now. Let us not keep it. Let us share it. Let us reach out with a long reach, a strong reach, and unprecedented reach. Let us reach out and touch people, not just with our opportunity. Let's touch people with our lives. Let's touch people with our experiences. Let's touch people with our heart and soul. Let's don't just touch people with a marketing plan and a distributor kit. Let's touch people with their health. Yes, with an opportunity, yes. But here's a commitment I'd like to have you make. So let's help people with their lives, not just their health. Let's help people with their lives, not just their in. Let it be said if they were around us one week, one month, or a lifetime, that when they got around us, not only did we talk about money, not only did we talk about products, we talked about life. We talked about getting better. We talked about becoming all that you can become. We talked about picking up a challenge. We talked about not settling for less than you can possibly be. Let's do that. Let's develop those abilities. Now, here's my last two parts to make this your best year ever. Get excited. And excitement is not just, you know, excitement that runs deep is the excitement that really lasts for a lifetime. Not surface excitement. There's been a lot of noise here, but what I really appreciate and feed you is that this room is full of more than noise. It's full of more than sound. I'll tell you what's really going to serve you well. And that's the excitement you feel inside that isn't even probably expressed on the outside. The excitement that runs deep, the excitement that stirs a commitment, the excitement that stirs courage. Give me the chance and I will get the job done. That kind of excitement. Develop that kind of attitude. Get excited about your own skills, get excited about your own abilities. You can put it into words. If I can start with nothing and finally stand on this platform, deliver the best words I can choose. Words are clumsy at best when you try to express what's going on in your heart, your head. But I've done my best. But I'm telling you, if I can find the words, you can find the words. And here's a key. Communicate. Don't leave it unsaid. If somebody's got some congratulations coming, don't fail to congratulate them. If a distributor has got a word of praise coming, don't fail to give it. Don't fail to say it. Don't fail to find the best words you can, struggle with the best words you can, borrow some words if you have to. I borrow all kinds of words. Winston Churchill one time said, Truth is incontrovertible. Malice may attack it and ignorance may deride it. But in the end, there it is. See, I love to borrow that. I mean, you know, that's better said than I could say it. Say, that's well said. You could stay up all night and not think of that. I mean, it's well said. I'm asking you to borrow the words that have come from this platform. Borrow the words that have come from the top ten. Borrow the words that have come from the distributors who are shared so eloquently with you. 
borrow their words, borrow their notes. But then I'm asking you to start choosing the best words you can. We want you to get good at these skills of communicating, skills in touching people's lives with words, touching their heart with words, helping them to see something they've never been able to see before by your word. Choose the best words you can. Don't fail with an opportunity to challenge yourself to choose good words. Search for the words, struggle for the words, but don't let somebody within the scope of your influence go without your words. Work miracles. Words can help people to see something they've never seen before. There's a lot of people you haven't got to yet. They can't see how they can possibly be healthy. And if you come along with your good words, you can turn on all the lights for them. They can't see how they can possibly be successful. And if you'll come along with your testimonial, that's why Herbalife is built on testimonials. Here's that where miracles help people to see. And when you come along and tell your story, people are going to say, Before you got here, I was blind. And now that you've talked to me, I can see. I can see the possibilities. I can see the opportunity. I can see that if I take a hold of this thing, I can change my life. I can see it. I can see it. I'm, see it. I'm asking you, don't miss the chance to work miracles with your words. Get excited about your possibility to work miracles with words. And now here's my last word to you. And I'm finished for this day. But let me give you this last one to make this your best year ever. Yeah. Get away. Balance your life. Take care of your family. Take care of your responsibilities. Take care of your spirituality. Take care of good friendships. We've got to have some friends. That's why I'm here. I made these extraordinary friendships way back when. It lasted all these years. Now I've got me an invitation to participate in something so extraordinary. This came about from a friendship. Now I have the skills on this as well. You know they offered you millions and a chance here just because you were friends. No, you don't just offer your friends millions. No, they got to have some skills. So I did bring skill. But I'm telling you my chance to bring my gifts and my skills to you today was because I nourished these friendships over all these years. But here's the secret to my success. I stood up and did it again. Stood up, I did it again, and I did it again, and I did it again all those many years ago. I did it when I was scared, and I did it when I didn't want to, and I did it when I was ill, and I did it when it didn't work well. And I didn't when they didn't appreciate it. And I didn't a lot of times when I didn't a lot of times when I didn't know much what I was doing. I just did it anyway. And now all these years later, I'm asked to walk on this stage with the greatest introduction I've ever had, greatest response and welcome I've ever had. The greatest opportunity I've ever had to touch this many lives with a mixture of words and heart and heart and soul. I got better. I got better day by day and week by week, and month by month, and I'm asking you to do the same thing until you can develop a long arm and a long reach. Until you can develop influence that won't quit. Touch people next year you couldn't touch this year. Touch people now you couldn't touch this year. Touch people now you couldn't touch. Before, conduct a meeting now you couldn't conduct before. Heart and soul now mixed in there that wasn't there missing before. I'm asking all of you to get better in spite of the winters, in spite of the downturn, the money downturn, the social downturn, personal downturn, the personal downturn, whatever it is. Just get stronger. Get better. We've all got those personal winners. We know what those are like. Barbara Streisand and sings it used to be so natural to talk about forever, but used to bees. Don't count anymore. They just lay on the floor until we scoop them away. You don't sing any love songs, you don't say you need me, and you don't bring me flowers anymore. I'll wear some. But hey, we're acquainted with all those personal winners and all the rest of it. The key is not to wish for a better winter. The key is to wish for more strength, more wisdom, more courage. Get better, get wiser, get better, get wiser, get stronger. Here's number two. Learn to take advantage of the spring. Spring means opportunity, and we've got a fresh spring going here. It's called a spring like no other, a spring, an opportunity like no other for you. But here's the clue, spring is not a guarantee of a harvest in the fall, in the autumn harvest, in the autumn harvest. Oh, here's what you must learn to do. Underline the two words if you're taking notes, take advantage. Take advantage of the spring. Don't just be faked out by the spring, because the nice weather has come. Looks like everything is going to be a lot better, but winter's finally passed. The spring is here. I'm telling you that's not going to do it for you. Just because the spring is here, it's not going to do it for you. 
You gotta seize it with your own two hands and take advantage. Read the books, study the tapes, go back through your notes, get ready to cash in on the spring. And now, there's a sense of urgency here. Here's why. Spring doesn't last that long. To be able to say, I just got back doesn't last that long. It's called the springtime of opportunity. Postpone a few things in the springtime. Get the job done, set aside a few things in the springtime. Get the job done, set aside a few things in the springtime. Get the job done. Report. I was raised in Idaho farm country. What if you asked a farmer to go bowling in the spring? What would he probably say? He would say, you're insane. You can go bowling in the winter when you can't plant the crop. You can't go bowling in the spring. You've only got a certain piece of time and you've got to get it done in that certain window of opportunity. And that's what we've got here. A window of opportunity. Let's take advantage of it. It's called, take advantage of the spring. And there's also an urgency here. How many springs have you got in a lifetime? Not very many. Life is brief. At the longest, the Beatles wrote, life is very short. And for John Lennon, it was extra short. For Michael Landon, it was extra short. But it is short. There's an urgency here. Don't waste your springs. Don't just let them pass, hoping the time will pass. Take advantage. Last year, it was them. Um, seize the moment. And I'm asking you, you know, this season to seize the spring opportunity. You've got a new organization going. Seize the spring. You've got a new distributor going. Seize the spring. You've got a new life situation going. Seize the spring. Take advantage of it. Don't let it pass without giving it the best of your two hands and your attention. Number three. First, learn how to handle the winter. Second, take advantage of the spring. Number three. In the summer, learn to nourish and protect. We've got some major challenges now come summertime. One is to nourish our values, take care of them, feed them. Don't let them go hungry. Don't let them go hungry. Don't let them go wanting the nourishment and care. Then is something else we've got to do in the summer. Defend ourselves against the enemies. Summertime is a unique time. It's a time of opportunity. It's also a time of challenge. But what else is new? It's what life has called for the last six and a half thousand years. It reads like this. Opportunity mixed with difficulty. Opportunity mixed with challenge. You've got a chance to grow like never before. But I'm telling you, there's going to be many enemies that are going to try to prevent us. As soon as you plant the garden, the busy bugs and the noxious weeds are out to take it. And you've got to learn not only to nourish your values, you've got to learn to do battle with your enemies. Whatever threatens you, I'm asking you to threaten it back. Take care of your responsibility, but don't take anything off anybody. Somebody wants to destroy your chances for a good future by their negative talk, negative thinking, putting it all down. I'm telling you, walk away if you have to. Walk away. Whatever threatens you, threaten it back. Now, some of our enemies are on the outside. But here's the most important thing to understand. Some of our enemies are on the inside. Let me give you a quick list. Indifference. You've got to do battle with your own indifference. Boy, it's easy to coast, especially if you've accomplished something extraordinary. Now, if somebody says, I've got to relax, there's the key. Not too long. The weeds will take over your plant if you rest too long. Don't rest too long. Don't rest too long. Indecision. You've got to make those decisions. The ones that don't turn out to be good give you experience to make better decisions. Don't let much time go by without making some decisions. The ones that you can make quickly, make them quickly. The ones that take time, take your time. But get those decisions made. Don't let indecision be an enemy. Rob your future. Empty your bank account. Leave you with zero in the purse. Don't let that happen. The next one is doubt. Sure, there's doubts on the outside. People doubt that America is going to make it. People doubt that Europe's going to make it. People doubt that Russia is going to make it. Poland, Czechoslovakia, they doubt the whole world is going to make it. But I'm asking you not to pick up all those doubts. I'm asking you to have some faith, have some courage, and believe. Drive your doubts into a small corner. Don't let them loose like a mad dog drive you into a small corner. Don't doubt the future. Don't doubt the possibilities. Don't doubt the extraordinary gifts that your distributors bring to your organization. Don't doubt that. Here's the most important one of all. Don't doubt yourself. 
If I've got miracle, working power to change my life, so do you. If I've got the ability to change, so do you. If I've got the ability to read, so do you. If I can discover, so do you. If I can discover, so can you. If I can grow, you can grow. If I can develop, you can develop. If I can get an invitation like I got six years ago to help take something around the world, so can you. I can stand on this platform. Idaho farm boy raised in obscurity. So can you. If the millionaire team can do it, president's team can do it. Walk off with the diamonds, the trophies. So can you. I'm asking you. Don't sell yourself short. We haven't sold you short. That's why Mark, Larry, Dr. Katzen and I have decided to invest the big share of our lives in these four days being with all of you. If we didn't think you were worth it, we wouldn't have shown up. We don't need to collect another meeting. We don't need to walk on another stage. We don't need to get up early like we do. Don't need it except for the challenge and the opportunity to invest in this many people's lives. We wouldn't get up early to have a chance to work miracles and invest in this many people's lives and help turn the world upside down for better nutrition called Herbalife. Here's the next one, worry. I'm asking you to drive worry into a small corner. You've got to worry some. All this negative stuff certainly serves some purpose. But the key is for you to be the master, not the servant. If it's two o'clock in the morning and your daughter's not home yet, best you worry in New York City. If you step off the curb and one of those yellow taxes is coming, best you worry. But here's what I'm asking you to do. You be the master of worry. Drive it into a small corner. Don't let it loose. And I'm asking you to go home with some new faith and some new courage. I'm asking you, don't worry, drive it into a small corner. We've all got concerns and sometimes we all wonder. And sometimes there's a little crack of doubt. We worry a little. But I'm telling you, drive it into a small corner or drive your worries into a small corner. I promise you from this platform, the dedication of the executives that you've seen and the president's team members and the people that have walked off with one through ten. I'm telling you, we're all dedicated to help this Herbalife future that includes all of you be the most spectacular thing. That's happened in the 90s. I promise you not to worry because you're in good hands. And now what I want you to be able to say, if you give Mark Hughes a telephone call or if you have a chance to talk to Mark Hughes in person, whatever village you've come from, whatever street you've come from, whatever street you've come from, whatever you come from, I'd like for you to be able to say sincerely and honestly with all the dedication you possibly can. Mark Hughes, I want you to go to bed at night and sleep like a baby because where I came from when I go back and represent Herbalife in that community, I want to reassure you, Mark Hughes, Herbalife, and that community is in good hands. I want some of you from Germany to get together, form a little coalition from Germany. After you've gotten out there and gotten your hands into it and you've had a chance to work in labor for a while, send Mark Hughes a message and say, Mark Hughes, the distributors that have now joined forces in Germany, you can rest easy. Mark Hughes, in Germany, Herbalife is in good hands. And all of the rest of the countries, make that your dedication, make it personal, make it collective as an organization. This incredible opportunity has been dropped in our lap. It's been given to us. We're going to take it to the marketplace, and we're going to take it to the marketplace with good hands, steady hands, growing hands, intelligent hands that can go touch people and get the job done. I'm asking you to commit to Herbalife is in good hands. A couple more enemies of the mind you've got to do battle with. In the summer, one is pessimism that tries to get you only to see the negative side. Of course, there's the negative side. Life is part negative. What else is new? If the glass is half empty, it is half empty. It is half empty. They say, well, I've only been taught to see that it's half full. Well, sure, it's half full, but it's also, I mean, can't you handle that? I mean, you know, that's not too difficult. But here's what pessimism would try to get you to do. Believe that it's only half empty. And when pessimism comes to your mind, you've got to educate pessimism because pessimism is stupid. Pessimism tries to get you to believe that it's only half empty. You've got to say, pessimism, you've never been to school. Too dumb and stupid to know. Of course it's half empty. But it's not only half empty. It's also half full. I don't know. 
I'm asking you to be in charge, be in charge of your own mind, be in charge of your own destiny. Do battle with your enemy in the summertime. In the summertime, you've got to learn to love like a mother, hate like a father. Give life like a mother, nourish, take life like a father. Give life like a father. Father says to whatever threatens his family, take two or three more steps toward this family and threaten them. You'll cease to exist. I'm father, I kill. Do battle with your enemies. Now, it's also possible to love like a father and hate like a mother. I'm not saying that is impossible. Nothing more dangerous than an angry mother. I saw an article in a magazine a little bit ago up in Canada showed a man with some claw marks on his back, had his shirt off, and big teeth marks in his neck. This man was out in the woods, had his flash camera, saw Mama Bear with a little cub. Stop though, this is cute. Took a flash picture. Mama Bear takes unkindly to this flash picture. Promptly chased the man, caught him, almost killed him before somebody rescued him. So, beware, Mama Bear. Okay, love like a father, hate like a mother, give life like a mother, take life like a father, or however you want to arrange it. Just so you nourish your values, nourish your family, nourish your family, nourish your family, nourish your customers, nourish your distributors, nourish your customers, take care of your responsibilities, feed, nourish. But then I'm also asking you to do battle with your enemies. Take swords to your enemies. Whatever's going to destroy those values, take sword through it. If it's worry, take sword to it. If it's threat, threaten back. You've got to be like your bloodstream. Good illustration. Red corpuscles to nourish like a mother. White corpuscles to fight and kill. You've got to do some negative thinking and just think positive. <laughs> Thank God for white corpuscles that think negative all day. Like corpuscles say, just show me some affection, I'll kill it. Whatever threatens this body and its future gets threatened. Whatever's not to kill this body gets killed. I'm asking you, take sword to your enemies, whether they're on the outside or whether they're on the inside. Protect your family, protect your future, protect your values, love, nourish, but also do battle with whatever is out there to do battle with. You take some courage from some of those that have been through the battle. They've given you their stories on this stage. They've been through it. They know what it's all about. Take some courage from that. And in the summer, now here's the last one, in the harvest time number four, take your harvest and all that comes your way with full responsibility. Don't complain. That fourth season complaining, I'm telling you, could ruin all of your chances. Complaining sometimes starts with an infection. If you don't take care of it, it becomes a disease. You battle with it in the harvest time. Reap your harvest without complaint. It's your crop. You sowed it. You either made the calls or didn't make the calls. You wrote the letters or you didn't write the letter. You were steady or you weren't steady. You were steady or you weren't steady. You did it or you didn't do. You put together a good day or you didn't put together a good day. Take responsibility when the harvest time finally comes and say, hey, it's my crop. Got to take responsibility for it. I do not complain. And then here's the next one. Do not apologize if you've done well. We offer no apologies when these winners that walked across this stage here go back to their communities. We offer no apology for making the kind of money they make because of the lives they touched and the people that they helped. No telling what would have happened to these people had they not touched many people's lives, who touched many people's lives, who touched many people's lives. When you go back to the community, all of you that were winners here, I ask you to go back with no apology because you've done your job well and you've given good hands to everybody you've touched. One of the things that I learned from my best karate instructors and I studied under six world champions is they told me that when you fight, always move forward. He said when you're moving forward, 100 of your attention is forward. So whenever you have a choice of either staying still and playing it safe or moving forward, move forward. It reinforces and cements the habit of moving forward. And most people, when they have a choice of moving forward or staying, playing it safe, play it safe, play it safe. Life is very perverse in a way because the more we seek security, the less we have it. And the more we seek opportunity, the more we have security. And one of the things that I used to think that if you were really courageous, eventually you got to the point where you weren't afraid. I'm going to tell you something that if you're not a little bit afraid at least three or four nights a week, you're not trying hard enough. Because we all have feelings of uncertainty, we all have fears, we all have doubts that hold us back. 
You cannot imagine a successful person without courage. You cannot imagine a successful person without the courage to face and confront their fears and to move forward. In my experience, the fear of failure is the greatest single reason for failure in adult life. And if we don't overcome that fear of failure, then we'll just be like the 80-90% that do not fulfill their potential. See, the wonderful thing is, only a few percentage of people fulfill their potential in any generation. And we can join those people simply by deciding to do so and doing what the other people do. If you want to be successful, if you want to fulfill your potential, study the men and women who are fulfilling their potential and just do what they do. Your self-esteem is largely determined by the gap between your self-image and your self-ideal. So striving to be like your ideal causes your self-esteem and self-confidence to go up. And then when somebody gives you a compliment that is consistent with you being a better person, then you really feel happy because you really feel happy because you really feel that you're moving toward that great goal. So the stages of changing your self-concept are number one. The change must be perceived by you as being both desirable and necessary. If your self-concept is you want to be very well organized and you need to be well organized to be successful in a competitive business, then you consider it to be both desirable and necessary. And that's the motive force that drives you. Number two is begin thinking about yourself as you would like to be. Just imagine you're a world champion. Think of how you would act if you're a world champion. And surprise, surprise. Surprise, your performance actually improves. You actually play better tennis just playing with the idea that you're a world champion. When you imagine yourself as already excellent at what you want to do, thank you. But changing your self-concept, we say in your self-concept, we say in your self-con, the self-ideal is a combination of all the qualities of all the men and women you've admired throughout your life. When you read about Madame Curie or Thomas Edison or Mother Teresa, when you read stories about men and women who have done wonderful things with their lives, and all of them from humble beginnings, you start to think, I'd like to be that way. And when you read about their qualities and how they persisted, you start to absorb through your skin being like that when the condition requires it. So the more you read about people, the more you form a higher, better, and clarified ideal. A person who thinks that they're already fine is not a person who's really open to any improvement. And people who think that they're already fine are usually people that aren't really that admirable because every admirable person you'll ever meet thinks that they could be much better than they are. They always compare themselves against an ever higher standard, which means that they're always in this state of dynamic tension toward becoming better and better and better and better. And that's why it's important that you think and talk about people that you admire. I have had my life so profoundly and positively changed by role models, mostly men, who kind of took me under their wing when I was growing up and coming from a lousy home. Even to this day, decades later, I can remember still wanting to be someone that they would approve. We do the things we do to earn the respect of the people we respect, and at least not to lose their respect. At least not to lose their respect. And many of us would go through tremendous privations and sacrifices not to lose the respect of someone whose respect we value, who is really important in my life. Who is really important in my life? Who do I really respect? And then you think, what would I need to do or not do to earn or to keep this person's respect? And you don't even have to know them. They just connect. They can be people who are very admirable. Never do anything that disrupts your peace of mind. Don't stay in relationships. Don't stay in jobs. Don't stay in situations that cause your peace of mind to be disrupted because your peace of mind is the highest good that you have. Begin to visualize and create clear mental pictures. And when you visualize yourself performing at your best, your subconscious mind organizes your behaviors and actions on the outside so they're consistent with the picture that you just fed. Visualize yourself as positive and confident. Visualize yourself as successful. Visualize yourself as happy with the new behavior. Practice your visualization over and over again because every time you visualize, as we said, every time you visualize, your subconscious takes it as a new command and you just keep replaying the picture. Before every event of importance, you'll find that success. Well, I'm probably jumping ahead of myself. Your image must be clear, vivid, and exciting.
That means the greater clarity your picture of yourself performing or your picture of yourself in the future, the faster it comes into your reality. Vividness is the most important thing of all. Feed your mind with these photographs almost like feeding them into your mental computer. Then your mental computer. Then your mental computer strives to put you into the kind of home that you desire. Assume the role. Act as if you're already the person you wish to be. I tell salespeople, if you really want to be impressive when you go in to see a client, imagine that you are extremely wealthy, you're worth $100 million. You like to make sales calls because you just sort of like getting out there and getting among them. So you walk in only worth $100 million and just could not care less whether this person buys or not. And when you have this attitude, I'm already wealthy, it takes the desperation out of your voice. Especially if the business is bad and the sales are slow and you need the sale. Whereas when you're really relaxed and you don't really care if they say yes or no, they're much more likely to buy from you when you're more relaxed. So, ascend the role. Just act as if you were already the person. If you want to be popular, act as if you're already popular. Treat people as if you're already popular. If you assume the role and walk and talk and act as if you're already the person you want to be, the feeling will generate the actions and you'll actually behave that way. You can actually behave that way. You can act your way to feeling by pretending that you have the quality already. If you pretend that you're happy, you'll start to feel happy. Affirmations are strong positive statements that you say to yourself and believe. With affirmations, your future potential is unlimited. In other words, you become what you say to yourself most of the time. You program it deeper and deeper into your subconscious programming until it begins to appear in your reality. Affirmations are first of all personal. You always start an affirmation with the word, I, I am, I earn, I achieve, I weigh. Second of all, they must be positive. I am responsible. I am responsible. I am responsible. I am responsible. And third of all, it has to be present tense. I earn X number of dollars per year. I weigh X number of pounds. I drive such and such a BW. Affirmations are powerful. Always speak to yourself in positive terms. When you write down your goals, you write them as affirmations. Speaking your affirmation aloud. What we find is if you say something aloud, it has two to three times the impact as if you say it to yourself. So standing in front of a mirror and reading your goals or speaking out your verbalizations. I like myself. I like myself. I like myself. Can do it. Can do it. I can do it. I feel terrifics. When you say it out loud and you say it to other people. If anybody ever asks me day or night, how do you feel? I always say, I feel terrific. I feel terrific. I feel terrific. You don't have to be a quantum leap different from somebody else. You just have to be a little tiny bit different in the critical areas that make a difference. And you can achieve that simply by making it a goal. Setting it as a goal and working on it. You can become anything that you want to become. The harder you work, the better you get. The fact of the matter is that less than 5% really succeed. That's less than 5% of the population really succeeding. Life. Four will be financially independent. Fifteen will have some savings. Eighty percent will be broke and dependent upon charities and pensions. Only one or two percent of people in each generation really make it in life. And if you think that it's hard to be successful, try being a failure. Try coming to the end of the trail with no money depending upon pensions. And you don't know what hard is until you try living like that. But if you work hard, the average self-made millionaire in America works 12 to 13 hours a day, works about 60 to 65 hours a week. In our society, you only work eight hours a day for survival. Everything over eight hours is for success. If you're only working eight hours a day, you better have a rich uncle or somebody else who's going to take care of you because eight hours a day only gets you survival in our society. Every hour over eight that you invest is an investment in your future, an investment in your success. And if you put in the hours over eight, whether it's studying, reading, or working, it will pay off. It's like throwing seed in the ground. When you throw a seed in the ground, the plant that comes up is not just one seed, it's hundreds of seeds. If you do all the things that we've talked about, if you concentrate on becoming excellent, concentrate single-mindedly, be clear about your goals, consider other people, 
practice the golden rule. If you practice courage, if you practice courage, if you practice consistency, if you practice all of these, then pretty soon you develop a level of self-confidence.